Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we are checking out Devstraw 2. That's right, Mistral 2. Viva le Francais. They are back parlaying software engineering. And look at it right there. It says it excels at tools to explore code bases, multiple files, and power software engineering agents now this is devstraw 2 the one two three billion parameter model and this is a dense model back in my day dense meant you know not so clever but dense means it's not moe so it's going to be super super smart and super super slow so we're going to see how well it runs on my mac i've got mac studio i've compressed it down to a q6 the version they've uploaded is already floating point eight so it's not it's not floating point 16 precision so that's pretty high as it is maybe i could have used that one but i went with q6 for these tests you're going to find out how slow it runs but the good thing about them is they've also released dev straw small and that's only a 24 billion parameter model and that one runs a lot faster you'll see now there's one thing to also note about this stuff the big guy the one two three b instruct model that guy isn't uh, you just check their license because they do have some clauses about how much money you make. I think it's 20 million, that kind of stuff. I've uploaded it to Hugging Face. I'll probably keep it there for a couple of months and then I'll just remove it because, you know, if I ever win the lottery, I don't want to all of a sudden get sued for doing something with it. But right now I'm not making anywhere close to that money so I can upload it and uh, go with it. But yeah, if you do download it, make sure you read their license before you use it. The small one, that one is that's just a standard Apache 2 license. So that one's liberal. It's got commercial use inside. But again, read the licenses and all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing I want to show you guys is if you read their benchmark. That's right. I love reading benchmarks because they have got the dense one, the dense one, the one that's not so smart, which is actually super smart. It's got 72.2%, which means it's got more than Kimi K2 thinking. So this guy is un under 100 gigabytes of RAM required to run, whereas Kimi K2 thinking you need two Mac Studios and distributing computing to get that one in memory. And uh, so 72% so if it does perform that well, it's gonna be slower, but you know, it's gonna be super smart, hopefully. And next up, the only one it couldn't beat is DeepSeek version 3.2. That one got 73%. And there's something I wanna show you about DeepSeek, because when I did a DeepSeek set test, I didn't actually showcase the coding ability. So let me just show you right now. Just check this out. Look at this. This was made by DeepSeek. This 3D simulation of the universe gave it a basic prompt and it did this. And even, I even, got a bit excited with the whole wing commander idea and look at that we got we can shoot lasers it's obviously you know a bit you know bespoke let's just call it that way but deep seek was um, doing some stuff and it's got some afterburners i just don't know how to use them like that dun 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 and i'll show you the prompt that i used i just pretty much said um, this was actually the second time around. I said 3D simulation of the universe using 3JS, and then I gave it some extra stuff. And I made this guy with the 4.6, the mixed quant version, 10 tokens a second, made 6,000 tokens, that's deep seek. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 3D simulation of the universe and see how Mistral performs, sorry, Devstral performs. So I'm firing up Inferencer over here, and this is gonna be in 1.8, version 1.8 I had to do some fixes which I also submitted to MLX so if people are using MLX natively um, I've submitted the fixes so hopefully they'll be merged in I only is already checking it out so hopefully it will be in there very soon and you can also run it on Inferencer version 1.8 so I'm going to select DevStraw 2 and I'm going to go ahead free simulation of the universe and I'm also going to turn on batched batching because I'm going to run two calls at the same time. So I'll get that one going and just show you how slow it is. So it's loading right now. It only takes a few seconds to load because it's only about 100 gigs to get into the memory. So you can fit this on a older Mac Studio and we're getting 6.4 tokens a second. So it's creating it. It's just a bit slower than some of the other models. But in saying that, those MOE models, as you fill up the context window, they do get slow, not six tokens a second slower, but they maybe get 10 tokens a second slow after 6,000 tokens, we saw that on DeepSeek. So this one off the bat is six tokens a second. I'm gonna let that churn in the background, but I'm also gonna use batching, and I'm gonna fire up the full prompt to make that 3D flight simulator in space. 
and let's just see what happens when we do two at the same time. So it's running them both concurrently. So they're both being batched and it's going 4.3 tokens a second each. So by default, if you're just doing one, you get 6.3 tokens a second. If you run them together concurrently, you get about 8.6 tokens a second. Now, memory wise, if we're just looking at it, so we've used on our system in total 166 gigabytes, but I'm also uploading to Hugging Face, this model, I'm going to be uploading the small one as well. We're also going to be testing out small ones, so change, stay tuned for that. Infrasa itself is only using 96 gigabytes for the model and the context window as well, and that's with two batches. Now, if you did want to add in another batch, so just say you want to start talking, let me just fire up a new conversation here. I'll say hello. And it's going to go ahead and process that one. And we're getting 3.25 tokens a second each. So we now increase our total throughput to nine tokens a second. And memory wise, we're still at 96.89 gigabytes. So when it comes to the bigger models, the ones that just barely fit into memory, using techniques like batching is going to be challenging because your context window is going to get too big. You're going to have to distribute compute. You're going to have to do some stuff to get it working. But when it comes to these smaller models, they're, they're a bit slower, but you can do things together at the same time. So let's leave this alone. Let it finish. Oh, it's, it's already done. Okay. I'm not impressed with that. Not so happy with that because the sample size that it gave it, I can just spout the size of my hand. So I know it's not going to do much. What I'll say is just to make it maybe a bit more thorough, I'll say single file HTML. And now hopefully make it do a decent generation. All right. So we have one result back and that is the spaceship one. The, the, the free simulation of the universe is doing some cool stuff at the moment. It's loading a texture by data and they've kind of memorized what the PNG base 64 coding is. I think it's going to be a bunch of nonsense. It just looks like nonsense, but we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, we do have the spaceship code. It looks very meaty. So I like that. So I'm just going to copy that in and see if we can out deep seek it. And we do actually have a spaceship on the screen. Now, can we move it? Does the mouse do anything? says WASD and up and down moves forward and backwards. Space fires a laser. So I do see a little laser happening over there. And shift is afterburner. It's very basic, but it's working. There's no compilers. Like I remember doing this with GPT OSS and there was always compilers that didn't know where 3JS is. I can't move around too much. Maybe I can prompt it differently and get some different results. It's actually taken over my mouse. So I had to press escape to get rid of that. So by comparison, this was deep seeks attempt lasers there, I guess it is weird in its own way as well. I do like that random nebula here. The best version is this. This just looks fantastical. I like this one and it looks like this is Devstral. All right, cool. I'll jump back in. And it's still <laughs> trying to do the PNG <laughs> off memory. So I'm not sure what's going to come up with. It just really wants to put a PNG image into the nebula. So we'll see what happens with that. I'll leave that going. But in the meantime, let's just do some more kind of programming tests. I'll just say, write a C++ function that prints. Just see out. Let's just see if it knows how to do that. Here's a simple C++ function that prints to see out. That looks good. It's just standard. And just for our knowledge base, our memory, we've now shot up to 105 gigabytes. And that's with a context window of over 4,000 tokens. So we've used up about 10 gigabytes with 4,000 plus another 4,000 as well from the other window. So that's how much memory is being used when you're doing lots of, lots of stuff. And it's um, this simple prompt, just to ask it to write C++ function, the C++ function that prints, prints it to see out. It's, it's getting really into it. It showed you how to do it. It's given an explanation and it's given you an alternative version. Now I'm also going to prompt it, say, convert that into Java and let's just see how, how it does translating it. Okay. So saying you can use it using a user interface, using a text view or a toast notification. And it also knows about log. So log D is the standard one. Log I is for information. So it kind of, kind of knows how to convert from C++. It's not talking gibberish. This is the Q6 version. It's doing some stuff. What else can I do now? Actually, there is this book 
actually got a chapter in this book. This is uh, about open geo. Let's just see if I can find it. And it was just about like open geo, 3D graphics, that kind of stuff. So I'll see if he actually understands anything. I don't know if I understand what I wrote back then. <laughs> let's just see what is this doing? Okay, this will be a good test and it's related to what it's currently doing in the other window. I'm going to say, here's a function. This function here is for loading a texture. So I'll say, how would I extend this to load a PNG? There you go. Let's see if it can figure it out. Now, PNG is a format. And if you load it at base 64, it's going to look like this. So let's just see what it's going to suggest. And in case you're wondering, look at this OpenGL Insight, this random YouTuber on the internet is a published kind of author, I guess it counts, yeah, published author alongside people from, what's that? NVIDIA, what's that? Or MIT, what's that? Intel, all these crazy, awesome people are writing some serious stuff. And you got me over here when I was a bit younger with a photo of me at a protest. So they're all serious people, serious, um, smart people. And I'm, I'm out there protesting. So we're going to see what it does. Oh, Look at that, it's improved my version of the code. So it's got new image, on load, gel bind texture, text parameter, wrap, clamp it to edge, okay. And it's wrapped with the clamp to edge. It's slow, I've got to say that. It's doing some stuff. I'm not sure about Mission Impossible over here on the left with its 5,000 plus tokens, mostly just trying to make a PNG image. <laughs> it would have been better just to point things on the internet. And given this speed, I'm going to have to put a big question mark on their claim that it excels to explore code bases. You're going to have to have like a 286 with maths co-processor to handle that. But anyway, it seems to be understanding the code. And this guy seems to be in a loop to generate a texture. But we did get at least one result. It has the potential to become the next wing commander in space. Watch this space. I'm going to start having to publish these uh code this to the internet, but let's switch it up because, you know, we get four tokens a second on each window. It's pretty slow. We've got 5,000 tokens of, yeah, we, we've got some sort of idea of what the capabilities of this model is. And I want to jump in and go to the smaller one and I'll show you how fast that one is. So I'll use the exact same prompt. I'll fire it up here. And this one is DevStroll Small 2. This one is Apache 2 license. You don't need to worry about making 20 million. Although if you make 20 million, congratulations, I'll be very, very happy for you. So I'll run that there. It's going to load up and let's just see how fast it goes. Boom, we're getting 32 plus tokens a second. This one is super fast. So we can actually do some proper... This one, this one, this one's probably the one that they meant about traversing the code base. And you got the big guy when you just want to do like an overnight operation. So let's do the two versions of it. The one with the spaceship and the one without the spaceship. And let's just see what happens. Okay. Hello. It's a it look, look, it didn't fail. I've had some of these models when I run them, nothing happens. It just has a runtime error. Whereas this one, it looks more like maybe a snooker table. <laughs> you got the white ball cue here. So walks around. Maybe we could actually convert it. You know what? Let's try converting it to a snooker ball. Now this model's fast enough, so it's making a 3D, it's making a 3D snooker game out of it. And we got now the spaceship version. And what is going on here? Oh, whoa, what is happening? Let's just refresh it. There's asteroids in the screen. There's some stuff there. I can't do any movement with the mouse. I can go right. That's nice. It does have potential. I can see this is like an intro scene to a game. Asteroid preords flying. Oh no, the kill Raffi are back. Something like that. Still working away, 3,000 tokens. Memory-wise, this model is only using 31.92 gigabytes of RAM. So I guess if you had a 64 gig machine, you'd probably be comfortable. If you had less than that, you could probably use memory offloading, model streaming, and it'll still run fast because it's a very, very small model. Small models, they work really well with offloading. But with batching and offloading, even if it's like a token a minute, you can have several batches, like 32 batches going at the same time, and it will, they'll all be one token a minute. So you can end up with a 32,000 tokens after a thousand minutes. Okay, it's done. It's got features. It's got a 3D snooker table, realistic. And we can see there is a pool table. Its textures are clashing. It's a bit buggy. 
it's a bit buggy so maybe with these smaller models asking it to do full-on games from scratch is a bit too much but the dense model it definitely was more comprehensive in its results definitely a lot more usable but of course the super big guys like the deep seeks they they were a lot better and we are asked them to do a lot i mean obviously the future is coming where this guys these guys will just generate photoshops for you out of the blue in fact let's just try that out at the moment make me a word processor make me photoshop in so the word processor over here it's not a long file whatsoever it's only 1000 tokens but it's saying it's got some cool features speed wise it took 44 seconds to generate the photoshop like image editor so it's a drawing application that one is a lot longer and that was 2500 tokens and that one took 96 seconds to produce let's say write some stuff we can strike through we can align to the right yo 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 and give it a heading say hello potential is there to get something going on the screen and this is a drawing application so i got a pencil okay i'm drawing down here i don't know why it made the window so small down there it's a bit of a weird design decision but yeah i'm drawing stuff so that's kind of nice it's very very basic but the potential is there so if you are new to coding you can get it to write out some stuff and then you can just like maybe work with it bit by bit make lots of saves save everything before it breaks things for you but yeah, that's, that's the current state of play. So we made a few demonstrations here. This is the 3D universe. This was DevTool Small. This is the Apache 2 license one. We've made like a spaceship simulator in its mind. So it views maybe Dalek spaceships. Beautiful asteroids though, gotta give it that. Uh, 3D snooker game, which is, I don't think it will pass the Apple review team. They'll probably label it spam which is what they do to me. I don't know about it being 92 at software engineering. It did have good comprehensions. Like when I asked it to add in PNGs, it seemed to add into the function, just basic JavaScript. When it asked it to convert printing to Android, it definitely gave me some toast examples over here. Lots of examples there. So it did have good comprehension, a little bit slow, but if you are looking for a different angle, you may be struggling on a problem. This is another model you can chuck at it and just see how it performs. So let me know what you guys think. Are you guys going to switch it over to Vive le Francais? The Comprehende, Jimmy Palais, Software Engineer. Are you switching over to DevStraw, checking it out? Let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. Now let's go play some pool. Yeah. It's only a game show, pull up a real good fight. I'm gonna be snuggling you, snuggling you tonight, big back.